Coming up on this week's edition of the Sports Desk, a champion is crowned in Pioneer League football. Danny Miskell tells us how North grabbed the chip. West was fighting for their playoff lives. Anthony Scott breaks down their gridiron grapple with Torrance. CIF playoffs are underway in high school girls volleyball. We'll get you caught up on all of our local teams. It's playoff time in high school girls tennis as well. And Cedric Welton was there for North's second round matchup. Get ready, Torrance. It's the playoffs. Playoffs? The sports desk begins right now. Welcome, everyone, to the only sports show designed with the Torrance sports fan in mind. This is the Sports Desk. I am your host, A.J. Vitone. And before we talk about the season they call post, let's talk about your responsibility to post on social media. Get on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, etc., and share your photos, videos, cat memes. And if there's something or someone you'd like us to do a story on, don't be bashful. Please let us know. You can always email us as well. Pass along your suggestions, and we'll put you and your videos on the show. We promise. As the old saying goes, be careful what you wish for, because it might just come true. And it did for the Saxons in a very good way, I might add. Talk about predicting the future. Here's what a couple of the Saxons players said on this very program back in August. Check it out. So let's get right to it. Guys, where are you going to finish this season? Eight and two, I, I believe, yeah. I see ourselves going maybe eight and two, eight and two. Eat your heart out, Dion Warwick. I think we've got some new psychics in town, and they're good. As predicted, the Saxons finished the regular season eight and two, not to mention a perfect five and zero oh in league play, and they arrived at the aforementioned thanks to their performance in the Civil War game against South High School. That game crowned the 2017 Pioneer League champion. All North had to do was beat South, and it was chip time. Here now is Sports Desk reporter Danny Miskell, who begins our trip to the chip. It's the final league game of the season where South High faces undefeated North. And AJ, as you can see behind me, the stadium's already cleared out because everyone's off celebrating tonight's W. It's a big deal for North as they go to the playoffs this Sunday. But before we get into that, let's first get into some highlights. Just 40 seconds into the game, the Saxons jumped right into the end zone. Saeed Galloway shined in this game and is going in for the quick six right here. Cole Kutch for the Spartans would respond by kicking this 36-yard field goal, but then a penalty was called for roughing the kicker. They scored the, uh, the field goal, three points, you know. We had a bad call with roughing the kicker, and they decided to decline it and uh, take back the three points. So next thing you know, um, my corner broke on the play. He smacked the ball away, he tipped it up. And I caught it back, and I ran it back to, uh, I think, 70 yards. I don't know, but that was a long run. The Spartans did their best to make a comeback following that turnover, but the Saxons stayed on their A game and inevitably took the W, finishing out the game 49-zip, which means the Saxons officially won the Pioneer League. I can't even explain how I feel. You know, my freshman year, we won league champs. Uh, we were 5-0, and I think in league two. So to uh, do it again our senior year, that's just great. You know? It's that idea of like manifesting something, you know, speaking it into existence. It's something that we planned, you know, we wanted, and not many people th thought we were going to be able to do it, and we did. North said they never underestimated any of their opponents. When asked if there was a turning point in league play that set the trajectory for the season, they said for them it was the rival game against West. We started off with the, the battle against West that was a 3 nothing, you know, hard-fought one. And then we played really well against losing her, and, and that kind of set the tone. And, and we knew from there on we were going to be able to, to hold our own and, and uh, should win out, and we did. To me, that was like the confidence booster for the season. You know, the beginning of the season, you know, we knew we could do it. It was just about doing it. And once we, once we beat West, it was like we can, we can really do this. With this game, the Saxons finished with the record of 5-0 and in the Pioneer League. I asked them what they attributed their winning stride to, and they said it was their team chemistry. They had purpose behind them. They had the camaraderie and the chemistry. So, you know, they knew from day one that uh, they're a family and that they're going to go out and play for each other, and they played unselfishly most of the time. So, On this team, there is no real star player. You know, there's 
a bunch of collectives willing to do whatever they can. And, you know, that's why, you know, to this point we've been successful because we are, we're really good with, you know, sharing the football and making sure we're all eating. AJ, the W tonight for the Saxons is truly surreal. You heard what Sagala said. At the beginning of the season, they weren't even sure if they could get to this point. But with all their hard work and this brotherly bond that they talk about, they are going to the CIF playoffs this Sunday. Reporting from Saxon Stadium, I'm Danny Miskell for the Sports Desk. Danny, many thanks. The Pioneer League champs will host their first round playoff game on Friday night, November 10th, when they take on Fullerton. Kickoff is slated for 7 o'clock. Be there or be square. It's your choice. The easiest way for West to guarantee themselves a berth to the CIF playoffs was to beat Torrance in the final game of the regular season. A win and the Warriors are in. It was as simple as that. Sports Desk reporter Anthony Scott was at Fred Peterson Field and he has our story. It all comes down to the last game of the season for the West High football team. The Warriors need a win tonight against Torrance if they want to advance to the CIF playoffs. Luckily for West, it is their senior night and they will have these home fans behind them cheering them on the entire way. Already behind 7 to nothing, West could not stop the Tartars running attack. Eric Suarez scampers into the end zone for another Torrance touchdown. West was down 14 to nothing but scored a touchdown on their next drive to make it 14 to seven. The Warriors got the momentum shift that they needed. Shea Whistler blocks the punt and West is set up with great field position. Two plays later, Brandon Poffenberger capitalizes on the block punt and delivers a nice touch pass to Dutch Silverlake in the corner of the end zone for six. After the extra point, it was all knotted up at 14. I talked to coach Greg Holt about the importance of his special teams unit all season long. I don't even know how many block punts we've had. We've probably got about six right now. So, uh, And we've scored off a couple of them, but it's changed the game for us, and we know that. I told them before the game that special teams is going to have to be a big factor. After half, West High came out slinging the football. Dutch Silver Lake hauls in this 40-yard bomb to set up a West field goal that gave the Warriors their first lead of the game, 17-14. After another blocked punt, Brandon Poffenberger hooks up with Dutch Silver Lake yet again for the score. That touchdown capped off 24 unanswered points for the Warriors. I caught up with Dutch Silver Lake to discuss his spectacular two touchdown performance. The whole time thinking like I got to make this play, I got to do it for my team because you know it's only going to benefit and you know every time it's in the air I just got to be aggressive and I, I go up in the air and I try to come down with it every time. Torrance would not go away easily however. With 15 seconds left, the Tartars had a chance to tie it with this 46-yard field goal. But the kick falls short, and West hangs on to defeat Torrance on senior night 24-21. A couple penalties saved us a little bit because they were chunking it there, and that would have put them closer for the field goal. So I knew it was going to be a game that was going to be all night long a battle. Our guys just stuck with it. You know, they kept fighting. Definitely my O-line. They, uh, they practiced hard this week and uh, they just were protecting me the whole game. It's always fun to win no matter who you're playing. The Torrance, obviously, they did pretty good against, they did pretty good, they're a good football team, and you know, we're pretty excited that we won, and we want, now we gotta carry over to CIF and you know, get, start winning there. Behind three passing touchdowns from Brandon Poffenberg, the West High Warriors were able to hang on against Torrance 24 to 21. The win ensures that the Warriors season will continue as they now advance into the CIF playoffs. Better yet for West High, they will go into the postseason with a lot of momentum as they have now won their last four contests. Reporting from West High, I'm Anthony Scott for the Sports Desk. Anthony, thank you. West High will host St. Paul in their CIF Southern Section playoff opener. Kickoff is scheduled for seven bells. Be there or, well, you know the drill. Check out this highlight. Bishop Montgomery at Cantwell Sacred Heart. Matthew Cortez airs it out to junior Nick Laufenberg for a 98-yard TD hookup. Look at Laufenberg go. Wow, what a play. Thanks to Nick Laufenberg for that video. That highlight took place in the fourth quarter. Unfortunately, the Knights of Bishop Montgomery ended their season losing to Cantwell Sacred Heart on the road. Sophomore Matthew Cortez was 13 for 32 for 222 yards and two touchdowns. Junior Matthew Origel finished with 79 total yards receiving and rushing. At the top of our show, you saw that South High School lost to North recently, which ended their season with a 1-9 record. Now, despite having a difficult season, there's plenty of positive to go around for the Spartans. 
One of the bright spots this year was the play of senior receiver and defensive end Javin Fish. At six foot five, it's easy to say that Javin stands tall on the football field, but more importantly, he stands tall off the field as well. And it's no surprise. You see, when it comes to the Fish family, it's always family first. Sports Desk reporter Anthony Scott explains. From grandpas to uncles and even cousins, everybody in the Fish family has played football in the Torrance area. Now two brothers, Jackson and Javin Fish, are making their mark on the South High football team. Javin is a senior and he's being recruited from schools all over the nation, while Jackson, he's only a freshman, but is still getting playing time at the varsity level. Our whole family played football, even on my mom's side. Uh, her brother played football, my little cousin Jason's dad, uh, he played at Torrance. I mean, the whole family played football. It's great to talk about all the time and family get-togethers. I played football at Torrance High School. Uh, the boy's uncle played football uh, at Torrance High School as well. And then they have cousins, multiple cousins, that played um, football at South High. Um, so we have a history dating all the way back to 1959 playing sports in the Torrance area. I wanted to play football in high school, but I didn't play freshman and sophomore year. Playing football and baseball is pretty much my life. So if I didn't have those, I don't know what I would do. The reasons I strap up to play football, that's where, I, that, that's where I'm able to get my anger out. Just being able to play the sport makes me just happy. Javin and Jackson are also lucky to have a father that is invested into their future just as much as they have. They definitely have pushed me to you know, get up for that 7 o'clock workout. So, I mean, my dad, we go out pretty much every Tuesday for late start. We go work out from 7 to 8. You know, I've been fortunate enough to um, be able to kind of create my own work schedule. So I've been able to dedicate most of my time to helping the boys follow that path to get into college. You know, there's a lot on the plate, but the man up above uh, allows us to do whatever it is that we need to get done. Football isn't everything for Javin and Jackson. They also spend time helping the less fortunate serving food at a local ministry. It's a lot on my plate. It's hard to balance, but I try to keep it because I know that helping others is a priority in my life. Because helping others is just, it's, 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 it's all karma. It's gonna come back right back to me. Just try to raise a couple of productive members of society. You try to, try to teach them to give. And uh, you know, whatever they do, to be the best that they can at it. Younger brother Jackson has the luxury of playing behind his brother Javin as he tries to become the next star on the South High football team. Seeing my brother be very successful right now in the game and uh, trying to do better things makes me want to do better things and follow his footsteps. All the advice I've given Jackson is probably the stuff that I've gone through. So, um, I mean, I, it's just like, it's just me trying to help be an older brother to him, really. And it, I just don't want him to go through the same stuff that I had to go through. He's made a huge impact on a lot of my whole life and especially the sports life too, to uh, watch the mistakes he's made and to make sure to learn from them. Yeah. And it's definitely helped my life a lot. I already knew he would have a chance to get in at varsity, but I didn't think he would be playing as much. So for him to prove himself, like I'm really actually really proud of him. To look out on the field, to see both of them out there, uh, shaking hands with their other teammates and being team players, it's, it's awesome. I, I can't really describe it in words. I'm just uh, very happy and, and, uh, that I can call them my sons. Javin and Jackson Fish have done a great job in continuing their family's football tradition here in Torrance. However, Javin's high school career came to an end last week and he'll now focus his attention on the college game. But the Fish family will still have Jackson Fish and he has three more years at South High School. Reporting from South High School in Rocket Ship Park, I'm Anthony Scott for the Sports Desk. Anthony, thanks. Great stuff. If you'd like to learn more about Javin Fish, you can visit his official website at javinfish.com. All right, to college football now, where the Warriors of El Camino are back to playing the way they were at the beginning of the season. In other words, they're back to punishing their opponents and making it look easy. Elko dropped a double nickel on Chafee College recently. Sports Desk reporter Eric Kaback was there for Elko's home finale, and he's going to drop some knowledge on us. Thanks, AJ. What a beautiful Saturday afternoon for some college football. We are here at Murdoch Stadium as El Camino plays host to Chafee College. Elko comes into this game on a two-game losing streak, losing last week at home to Riverside. Meanwhile, Chafee comes into this game with a 1-7 record overall. Let's see if the El Camino Warriors can get back to their winning ways. All right, those Warriors coming out steaming. 
try to get a dub. First series of the game, quarterback Cole Klayman hits Stephon Robinson, turns on the Jets. He is gone for the 58-yard touchdown. The Warriors up early. Second quarter now, Aaron Thomas in at quarterback. He hits Robinson again in stride. Say bye-bye to the defenders. He goes 65 yards for the touchdown. Thomas explains to me how their quarterback rotation works so well. It's just one of those things where we know that all three of the quarterbacks, me, Cole, and Jerem, we're all good quarterbacks. And so we know that every time our name is called, like they expect, they expect greatness to come out of us. Now first series of the third for Chafee, Connor Meyer hits Elijah Nichols. He goes 77 yards for Chafee and Chafee cuts it to a one possession game. They trail 21 to 14. Still in the third, TJ Brumfield in the backfield. He takes the handoff, goes 19 yards for the touchdown. His third touchdown of the game. Brumfield talked about how the hole started opening up. We had a couple nicks and bruises on the old line, so it kind of slowed things down at first. But then we just talked on the sideline, communicated, and everything just worked out. Stuff started, the hole started opening up. Now fourth quarter, Thomas in at quarterback. He hits Hunter Williams. Get the fade for the four-yard touchdown. Next Warrior possession, Thomas throws a perfect ball to Brian Keskis for the score. I spoke with head coach Gifford Lindheim after the game. I thought that today um, there were times where we threw the ball well and, and times where we ran the ball well. It just really depended on circumstance of the game. What an offensive outburst by El Camino College. They put up 55 on the board and went 55 to 28. They had 621 yards of total offense. They ran for three touchdowns and threw for four. Reporting from Murdoch Stadium, I'm Eric Kaback for the Sports Desk. Eric, many thanks. Okay, we're going to take a quick time out here on the Sports Desk, but whatever you do, don't touch that dial because you'll miss this. Still to come, we've got playoff girls volleyball involving South and Ambassador. And speaking of the Lions, Cedric Welton will introduce you to Ambassador standout Alyssa Bobich. Cedric will also tell us how North made out in the CIF girls tennis playoffs. Plus, Danny Miskell spotlights North Torrance girls softball. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Alexa, how do you tell if asparagus is still good? If it's not moldy or slimy, it's okay to eat. Mm. Enable the new skill from Save the Food on your Amazon Alexa and help fight food waste. Welcome back, everyone. Remember to follow us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Share your story ideas. Post your photos and videos. We want to hear from you, Torrance. After all, this is your show, so be sure to get involved. All right, the girls' tennis team at North High School advanced to the second round of the CIF Southern Section Division IV playoffs. The Saxons hosted Rancho Mirage in round number two, and that's where Sports Desk reporter Cedric Welton picks up our story. We're at the North High Tennis Courts, and it's the second round of the CIF playoffs. The Saxons are hosting Rancho Mirage with hopes of keeping their playoff run alive after an impressive victory over Bishop Montgomery a week ago. The Saxons are coming off an impressive victory over Bishop Montgomery last week, winning 12 to six. Today they had a tough challenge against the Rattlers who were 18 and one on the season. Coach David Condiff talked about the matchup. Uh, today's match against Rancho Mirage, we played sort of slow coming out of the gate. We were up on a couple of our sets, and unfortunately, we didn't finish. Uh, one of my doubles teams was up 5-2, lost in a tie break. One of my doubles teams was up 3-2, lost 3-6. So after one round, it was 1-5, and then the rest of the match was an uphill battle. We went into the last round down 3-9. One four of the six, but unfortunately that means final result of 7-11. We just didn't have it today. With the team season over, the attention now goes to individual play. Pioneer League champion Emma Shaw Lasso swept her competition, winning all three of her matches. She's now looking ahead at her next challenge. So I got to get back to just practicing, drilling, 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 and then hopefully come out and re represent North again one more time, and hopefully I'll make it far so North can celebrating that <laughs> victory. The Saxons showed a lot of grit today, but in the end, the Rattlers of Rancho Mirage are just too much as North High fell 11 to seven. Reporting from North Torrance, I'm Cedric Weldon for the Sports Desk. 
Cedric, thank you. As Cedric said, North beat Bishop Montgomery 12-6 in round one. Now the other local school, South, was defeated by Calabasas in the first round by the final of 10-8. And don't forget, the singles championships begin in just a couple of weeks. The CIF playoffs are underway in girls volleyball, and we begin with Lauren Walsh and the South High Spartans. They started their postseason with a first round home game and that was against the Lancers of Orange Lutheran. Spartans would come out firing. First set of the match, the score is tied at lucky seven. Orange Lutheran serving Lauren Walsh, the dig. And then Christian Fritchie sets up Walsh for the massive kill. Spartans lead eight to seven. Bridget Campbell serving for South. Ace is the place for her. That was her second straight ace. South comes back to tie the set at 20. Now check this out. It'll be Christian Fritchie setting up Lauren Walsh. And she scores with a dipsy do move. Hey there. Walsh led the Spartans with 29 kills and 16 digs. Walsh serving here. Spartans would drop the first set 26 to 24, win the second set 25 to 19. But the second seeded Lancers were too tough, winning the next two 25 to 23 and 25 to 20. Orange Lutheran wins by the final of three to one. We move over to Division 10 now. That's where the Lions of Ambassador High School also found themselves at home for their first round contest. The Braves of Sherman Indian were visiting Paul Vigiano's Lions. First set, Ambassador only down four at this point. Watch this, it's senior captain helping senior captain Alyssa Bobich. will set up Tara Delk. And well, check that out. It's gonna leave a mark. The ball was in, point goes to Ambassador. Lions would drop the first set though, 25-21. We switch sides now, second set, Braves serving, and once again, it's Bobich assisting Delk, and she's killing him softly with her song. Lions trail by three at this point. After falling behind again, Lions would close the gap. This time, Bobich sets up sophomore Layla Bradford with the kill dipped in mild sauce. Lions fighting back, and they gave a valiant effort. The Braves were just too much in this one. Sherman Indian goes on to sweep the match in three straight sets. As for the rest of our local schools in Division II, the Knights of Bishop Montgomery lost in three straight to Palos Verdes. Meanwhile, in Division IV, the Torrance Tartars fell to La Habra by the final of 3-1. And the Warriors of West High dropped their first round match with Santa Monica by the score of 3-1. Congratulations to all of our local teams on great seasons. Job well done, ladies. One of the reasons for Ambassador High School's success this season is senior Alyssa Bobich. She led the Lions on the court and in the classroom. Bobich scored a perfect 36 on the ACT and was named the school winner and state finalist for the Wendy's High School Heisman Award. Alyssa Bobich is a born leader, and as Sports Desk reporter Cedric Welton explains, she leads by example. Ambassador High is the home of a special kind of student athlete. Alyssa Bobich has been a leader for the Lions in athletics and academics throughout her four years. Alyssa has also been named an All-Mahalan League volleyball player in all three of her varsity years. This season was different for me. I'm usually a hitter or a passer, but our senior graduated, our senior setter graduated, so we need a new setter. I really enjoyed it. Alyssa is not only an all Mulholland League athlete, but she's also been a pillar in her community, a Wendy's Heisman State finalist, and her school's representative for the FCA. However, she talked about how important it was to be recognized by her teammates as a captain. I feel like I have the opportunity to kind of leave a legacy more to the younger girls and kind of be a leader on the team and teach them how to be a good sport and like how to play as a Christian and how to play your best. Like every game, you gotta play your best. Alyssa is not only an exceptional student athlete, but a remarkable person. We talked about how she uses her platform as a leader to motivate those around her and uplift the student body. I am student body president. Basically what I do is, alongside my vice president, we kind of oversee the rest of ASB and planning events that will make people excited to come to school, excited to be a part of the ambassador family. Alyssa says she is motivated by her peers and family, saying she just wants to be the best person she can be for them. Alyssa is now looking forward to colleges and what field she'd like to study. Her time at Ambassador is full of accomplishments, whether it's being a captain for a volleyball and soccer clubs or earning a perfect ACT score. She is simply proud to be an Ambassador Lion. 
I love Ambassador. Ambassador has been just a wonderful place for me to grow. Alyssa's a fantastic student, um, a great student, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, one that, is, uh, that we can't be more proud of at our school. She's definitely left a great uh, legacy here at Ambassador. While sad about her imminent departure, Alyssa's happy she left behind a legacy that can spark the future generation of student leaders here at Ambassador High. Reporting from Ambassador High, I'm Cedric Weldon for the Sports Desk. Cedric, thank you. Let's talk college volleyball. It's scary to think the El Camino women's team hasn't lost since Friday the 13th. It's true. Friday, October 13th was the last time the Warriors tasted defeat when they were swept by Miracosta. Since that time, the Warriors have won six in a row, and they've done so in devastating fashion. Warriors hosted Cerritos College recently. Warriors weren't messing around in this one, that's for sure. First set, Elko up 15 to seven. Renee Bryden killing it, watch out. Ball hits our camera, be careful. We have expensive equipment here at the sports desk, I think. Either way, camera's okay. Warriors take a 15 to eight lead. Moments later, Elko up 19 to 10. I go Waters, this time ball bounces off Daisy Segura's hands, hits the camera. What is there, a bullseye on that thing? 20 to 10, Warriors lead and they were in complete control. Sarah Dyer to Ico Waters, and she is licensed to kill. Thank goodness that one didn't hit the camera. Waters had 10 kills. Elko wins the first set, 25 to 17. Elko in the near court now, second set, and they're up 17 to seven. Check this out. Jalen Motley with a massive kill coming up soon. Bam, right there. Warriors win the second set, 25 to 12. And then we move to the third. Warriors in the far court now, and it's gonna be Kylie Morimoto serving for Elko. Warriors up 18 to 13 at this point. And uh, Morimoto would set up Jalen Motley and uh, check that out, Geronimo, look out below. El Camino wins easily, completing the three zip sweep over Cerritos. Motley, by the way, led the way with 13 kills. Now before we leave you, we're gonna check in with the North Torrance Girls Softball League. These girls are making everyone proud, playing the game the way it's supposed to be played and having tons of fun at the same time. Sports Desk reporter Danny Miskell has our story. It's the final game of fall ball season here for the North Torrance Softball League and I went ahead and asked Coach and the girls how their games went today. I feel like it went good, you know. We, we had our ups and downs today, but we learned from our mistakes and then, yeah, so far it's been good for me at least. The girls in the 10 and under league played Cerritos for their last game, while the 14 and under league faced Long Beach. For many of these girls, this fall season was the first time they played softball. Probably like 70% of the girls are new players. This was my first season here playing and then I actually had a lot of fun. So, The girls have been learning the basics from batting techniques to how to field a ground ball and even some fun softball cheers to chant from the dugouts. I asked Michelle what she loves most about playing softball. The emotion in it, the passion, you know, hitting the balls. <laughs> to me, softball is like a place where it's like I can let go of all the stress I have on my back and then just like be calm about it. The league is not only an outlet for the girls, it's also their family. They're like my sisters, so I would never let them down. Overall in fall training, Coach Oroso has been proud of the girls for having the right attitude and showing lots of improvement. Throughout the season, I've noticed that some of these girls were, were very hungry, eager to learn, you know. So that kind of made my job easier because I noticed that they wanted to learn. With softball, the girls get that it's not always about winning and that it's all about the learning experience. If there's like a conflict in between um, some of the players, you learn from your mistakes from that too, whether it's like on the field or like personal conflicts. And you learn and you keep on moving forward. With fall season rounding out, Michelle says that she and the girls will continue to practice, go to softball clinics, and some will move on up to play for their high schools. The girls had a great game today, and they will be picking up back in February for the spring season. Reporting from Hamilton Field, I'm Danny Miskell for the Sports Desk. That's awesome. Danny, thank you. Okay, that does it for this week's edition of the Sports Desk. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, we appreciate your support. My name is A.J. Vitone, and I've seen, heard, and said enough for one week. We'll continue this conversation again next week, I promise. Until then, don't forget to follow the Sports Desk on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And remember, you can email us as well. We'd love to hear from you. That's all the time we have, sports fans. We'll catch you next time right here on the Sports Desk.